when talking about collaborative economy uh, in relation to sustainability, it's almost impossible to not talk about the concept of circular economy. So I'm really happy that we have here today uh, Christoph Samples of uh, Schema Business School, uh, who is also founder uh, of the European Institute of the Functional and Cooperative Economy. Welcome, Christoph. Thank you. Thank you, David. Hi, everyone. Uh, very pleased to be with you. Um, well, indeed, uh, I'm, I'm a lucky man. I'm, I have the chance to work in functional and cooperation economy, which is an amazing and passionating field. And I will try to share my passion with you in, in 13 minutes. Okay. We heard a lot about sustainability today, this morning, this afternoon. And uh, functional cooperation economy is a model that is based on sustainability. Its primary mission is to design innovative business models that are able to create a positive synergy between financial success, environmental performance, and social well-being. Okay? So my question is, are business models from collaborative, from sharing economy, systematically uh, sustainable in the three pillars, economically, financially, and socially. We have discussed and we have heard this morning about Airbnb uh, and about the problems of capturing a lot of financial value from the classical markets, the classical business models of the hotel industry, uh, impacting negatively uh, jobs, uh, within this industry. So we see that it's not because we are engaged in a sharing economy that in fact we are able to generate social issues. It's a little bit more complex. So please, let's have a look at another emblematic model which is the car sharing. We always present, introduce car sharing as being virtuous in terms of environmental performance. Okay, let me tell you a story. When we buy a car, we put a lot of money on the table to use our car around 7% of its lifetime. What does it mean? That means that we put a lot of money on the table to stay our car at the car park around 90% of its lifetime. It's not very efficient. Okay? Thanks to car sharing, we're able to increase this percentage up to 50, 60%. That means much more efficient. What does it mean? That means that, that with one car, we're able to provide much more services than when we own the car thanks to the car sharing. Is it the end of the story? Well, if you look at the French market, now in France, we have around 33 million cars on the road. And just imagine the dream that would be to shift totally to a car sharing system. That would mean that the amount of car of the road would be reduced up to 8 million. That means shifting from 33 million to only 8. Wow, very nice. Okay. Now look at the average lifetime of the car when we own it, 16 years. Look at the average lifetime of the car where is it it is shared among users. Because it's used much higher, that means its reach is end of life much quicker. So what does it mean? That means that the end life of a car, on average, is after 3.3 years. So if you want to replace nowadays all the cars that are at the end of their life to replace them, we need to manufacture in France 2 million cars a year. And if you want to manufacture the cars we would need in a totally oriented car sharing system, we would need to manufacture 2.4 cars a million cars a year. That means 20% more than nowadays. So you see that it's not so easy. It's not so direct. Being sustainable is really a tricky issue. And even models that seem very, very positive from the environment, in fact, are not so positive that when we deeper investigate the context. 
With functional and cooperation economy, what we raise as a question is, is it viable to use the car as the core piece of our mobility solutions? And in fact, rather than using car, either owned car or pooled car, we believe that we should shift toward a more integrated solution of mobility, encouraging people to shift from personal cars or pooled cars to other modes of transport. For example, transportation systems, or public transportation systems. But what does it mean? That means that all modes of transport should be connected much more efficiently. And nowadays, the system is not very efficient. So what can we use to use, to connect all those modes of transport so that the system would be more performant, more efficient? First, we could allow modes of transport to connect themselves based on real-time information. When you have a train entering into a rail station uh, and a bus that waits for the trains to leave, it's based on theoretical scheduling. Okay? Just imagine that normally the train would arrive at 11, okay? but unfortunately, five minutes delays. That means that, that when the train reached the rail station, the bus is away. Okay? That means it's not efficient. So just imagine we're able to connect buses and trains thanks to real-time information exchange. That means we're able to provide a new material resources exchange of information within the systems so that in case of delay, the bus could wait. Okay? What does it mean? That means that thanks to this immaterial resource, we are able to uh, improve the effectiveness of the system, to improve the performance of the system. This is one element, one key principle of functional economy. Functional and cooperation economy is based on immaterial resources in its ability to improve the performance of a system so that it could be much more efficient than if we cut the system within the single parts. Okay? Second element, if we want to encourage people to use public transportations, we should provide them with incentives okay, so that they feel they are not losing time when they use public transportation, but rather that they, they could use this time to do activities that may be valued by them. What kind of services could we add within our modes of transport, especially public transport, so that people could not anymore uh, lose the time, but use this time in a way which is interesting for them? So that means what kind of services, what kind of immaterial resources could we integrate within the systems so that it's, it could be more attractive for people? These are the key ingredients of functional and cooperation economy. So with functional and cooperation economy, in fact, what we are trying to do is to shift from a model that is based on uh, sales of a volume of products, a volumes of services toward the implementation of an integrated solution based on a use performance. Nowadays, we have coached nearly 100 CEOs from various industries, both being farmers, some being, sorry, some being farmers, some being manufacturers, sometimes heavy manufacturing companies, okay? some being engaged in services company, call center, for example, and every time, we were, we, we were able to help them shifting from a volume-based business model to a value-based business model based on this integrated solution. Why is it a key issue in terms of sustainability? Just think in terms of the configuration of our business model. The business model is the way a company create value, produce value, distribute value, and earn money from it. Okay. Most of our business model nowadays are volume-based. What does it mean? That means that the more you want to earn cash, the more you need to sell units. Units of goods, units of services. 
this is a deadlock in terms of resources consumption. Okay? It's impossible to engage into the decoupling of the wealth generation from the use of resources and energy within this coupled business model, volume-based business model. So we have to escape from those models, from those models so that the, we could implement models that encourage the reduction of volume. So let me tell you another story, which is a, a story based on a company we have worked with. Just imagine you are a pesticide manufacturer. You are selling tons of pesticides to farmers. Not very sustainable. Okay. What are the expectations of the farmer? In fact, the farmer wants to protect his crops. Okay. So just imagine right now that we are not selling them anymore pesticides, but we are selling them an integrated solutions of crops management invoice per hectare protected. What does it mean? In the first model, each droplets of pesticides is a part of my turnover. In the second model, each time I put pesticides on my field, this is a cost that should be minimized if I want to improve my margin. So right now, I'm, I, I'm able to decouple my business model. So now, if I want to improve the effectiveness of my solution, what can I need? What, what do I need to do? First, I need to understand very precisely the way this farmer work, the context of his farming activities, okay? the weather, the, kind of the, 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 the nature of the soil, the kind of parasites I will need to manage. Okay? And I will, engage, I will need to engage into a co-creation with him or with her in order to better manage the protections. Then I will need to substitute pesticides with other techniques to protect the crops. For example, I may decide to reintroduce insects that will kill parasites. That means, in fact, I will introduce, reintroduce in those fields, in those crops, uh, natural ecosystems that will provide a free service, but I will be able to monetize this free service. I will be able to earn money from it. It's much more sustainable, and I can generate value from this. A value which is good for the environment, a value which is good, for example, in terms of health, that means it produce uh, social values, but also economic welfare. So that means that the knowledge, the quality of my R&D, the capacity of my company to cooperate with other associated businesses, entomologists, biologists, uh, to define the best options, the best approach to manage the crops, will increase the, the, the efficiency and the relevancy of my solution. This is the principles of um, functional and cooperation economy. So there are four pillars. First, functional and cooperation economy is directly related to sustainability and tries to implement positive synergies between the three pillars, uh, including the question of the governance of the system. Second, we totally change the dynamic of performance of the company by relying this time on immaterial resources to, to increase the performance of the systems. And we are able, the, th the third principles, to decrease the amount of raw materials, the amount of material resources engaged into the production process by changing the content of the growth relying on immaterial resources and the ability to provide both services and value. And last point, and this will be my conclusion, because immaterial resources becomes key in the productivity gains, where are they located within the company? They are located in us, in the workers. That means that the quality of the work, the quality of labor, becomes a uh, highly strategic variables uh, that is directly connected to performance. Thank you very much for your listening.